All right, folks, welcome to Melwani and Metal Nation Radio with us today. We have Gamma Bombs frontman, Philly Bryan. How are you doing, Philly? Hey, how are you doing? It's Philly Burton, but it's not an easy surname, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Now, the, the new album, Untouchable Glory, I mean, uh, before we go in depth about it, I just you know, really wanted to know that what's this fascination of Gamma Bomb with, with these 80s or let's say, you know, more like this Kung Fu uh, kind of a vibe which is coming out of you guys vintage moves well I guess, yeah i guess you know it's a really simple question you know uh, i w- i would pose the question back to you guys do you love rad ass movies uh, absolutely yeah do do you love uh you know kick ass video games and old school really rad music of course you do i do so we're, you know we're exactly so we're just the same as you or anybody else you know we're a big gang of nerds and um <clears throat> i get the way that i always sum it up is you know, we're from the 1980s and we never left. Right. Um, so that's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah, I think with the band, you know, ever since we first got together 13 years ago, mm-hmm. um, the band is in a weird way. It's just an extension of our friendship as a gang of dudes. Right. You know, when we hang out, we talk about movies and we talk about comic books and we talk about um, video games and, and all that kind of uh, man child type stuff. Right. And I suppose that the music is just an extension of that. With this record, though, <clears throat> excuse me, with this record, though, it was more about um it was more about kind of zooming in on the the kung fu and action movies that we really love because i think in the past we've we've spent a lot of time talking about you know horror uh stories you know kind of like spooky storytelling which is something we all absolutely love Mm -hmm. um but i feel like we kind of spent nearly four albums i guess talking about that you know and we've also done quite a bit about sci-fi and things like that right um so it's just a natural extension really we kind of got bored of talking about those things and our number one thing that we wanted to talk about was you know that kind of the atmosphere that's evoked by by um by really amazing old martial arts films that are terribly made. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. I mean, it's, it's it's as simple as that. No clean guitars, no ballads, no synths, just pure thrash metal. That's, that's it. Pure thrash metal. That's it. Yeah. No harps. No um. No trombones. No flutes. Sadly, <laughs> sadly, no flutes. No xylophones. Um. No giraffes. That's another real. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely. With no filler, no guitar wankery, no build up, Untouchable Glory is, let's say, relentless. Uh, is it safe to say introverse chorus solo madness? Yeah, yeah, I think that's completely fair to say. You know, we, we pride ourselves on being a band who, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about our music. We always like to say we don't take ourselves seriously, but we take the music seriously. Right. So I think our, our songwriting is something we spend a lot of time on. But um, we're we're proud of being a band who aren't constantly trying to reinvent the wheel. Right. Um, you know, uh, I, I think like consistency is a thing that people are obsessed with in, in heavy metal right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, not consistency, innovation. I think people are obsessed with innovation in heavy metal right now, and you know they don't look at uh, consistency as much as they should. Because go back to all those bands that you really really love, like Classic Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, uh, you know Motorhead, SEDC, Kiss, Iron Maiden their records all sound the same you know that's their strength their strength is that they're a consistent band so with us it's kind of like yeah we want to be lean and mean we want to write like relatively simple songs uh that yeah that tell really straight up stories and to be honest i think that's one of the reasons why we've been able to do this for 13 years we haven't driven ourselves crazy trying to trying to break the mold every time we write a fucking song you know right we've always just um we've always just dug into the things that we know we can do well that's really cool because that kind of reminds me a statement recently. I was having a chat with uh, uh, Overkill's frontman Bobby, and uh, they said the same thing. Basically, we don't want to, you know, we want to maintain the consistency. Yet we don't want to lose our identity. Yeah, totally. And you know, uh, Bobby is, you know, Bobby's a good friend of our of ours, and um, he's a big influence on me personally. And I think on that front, we agree completely. You know, um, I think it's it's one of the things that is most important in being an artist of any kind is that you do a thing that is recognizably yours mm-hmm. and uh, that, that people come to expect it from you. <clears throat> but also that you can, within that, do a better job each time. And I think in music at the minute, that's really been forgotten for some reason. I think everybody wants to be Gojira or, or some kind of crazy, you know, right. uh, prog group or something. But yeah, that's that's not for us, man. We, we kind of, we booked our spot early and now we're just going to stay there. That's what we did. 
That sounds really good, Philly. Now, for you guys, I mean, you guys released the first single, and how's been the response so far? Because uh, Gamma Bomb fans are are basically, you know, obviously, like you said, they want the consistency. So when you release the Untouchable Glory, the first part of Ninja, so what was the response likely from the fans? Yeah, you know, the the song is still trickling out there right now. We're getting the music video put together, and um, you know. People have heard it because it's the pre-order track with our record, and it's um, you know some people have shared it around, and that's okay. Um, yeah, people's reaction, um, it's really making me excited because I think it's probably the most catchy and most exciting song we've ever written, and I really mean that. You know, we've written like a hundred songs, and I kind of feel like this song is the one that could be our you know uh, ram it down or shout it out loud. You know, right? And um, the people who have heard it so far, I have heard. Nothing bad about it. Uh, obviously, our our fans always, you know, excuse me, one second. No worries. Um, you know, our fans always come to respect that kind of um, that sound anyway. So that that's really good that our fans are happy about it. But on top of that, we've also had people who never never really listen to Gamma Bomb and don't really, um, you know, don't really even dig the type of music we make. Mm-hmm. And even those people have been saying that they really love the song. So yeah, I'm kind of hoping that this is our. Um, I don't know, it's our uh, fucking day tripper or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, you know, I was uh, basically, you know, uh, it's been a great time from last two years. Every time I go to your, or I go to the AFM channel and see the video of Terrascope. Now, that's something which was really crazy. Ah, uh, thank you. Something planned, you know, for this album to release a music video, which is, you know, even more crazier than Terrascope. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So um, the plan with this record is we're going to, well, what I would love to do is, I would love to make as many music videos as possible. That's that's kind of the plan. One of the big things we want to do is make an animated music video. So we're talking to some people about that. Right. Um, right. And also, yeah, I think, you know, Periscope is an interesting one because we made that video and we were just like, okay, let's spend like no money and be silly. Mm. And then we made another music video for Backwards Bible and we were like, okay, this time, <clears throat> you know, this time this is a big deal. And right. we went and got like a castle and actors and special effects and lights and a crew and everything. And you know what? In the end, when people watched it, they were like, yeah, that's okay. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, whereas I think the thing we've learned is, you know, our fans want to see us want to see the video having a good time. You know, they, they don't want to see us trying to be too cool for school or, or getting ideas about ourselves. <laughs> they, want, they want to see us just acting like crazy Irish assholes, which is, you know what? That is completely fair. So... I think with this record now, we're going to do something very similar again. But, you know, hopefully we'll ramp it up. Um, we'll ramp it up like by 100 percent, I think, in, in the ridiculousness. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> now, talking about your vocals, it's it's, you know, very easy to say that there's that quick, clean vocals that wonderfully, you know, are, you know, go with the, the naturally upbeat tempo of every song on this album. Uh, yeah. even, even the backing vocals. So it's kind of, you know, that adds that extra tinge of badassery to an already solid vocal performance by you. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm actually taking a back by a complimentary. You're being Jesus. <laughs> um, you haven't even asked me my star sign yet. Um, yeah, uh, well, thank you very much. You know, the vocals for me are obviously very important. Um, and uh, it's been a bit of a long road, you know. I, I had a really bad injury to my voice. Yes. Um, yes. A couple of years back, um, which, you know, was pretty serious stuff. I'd always, uh, I grew up singing, you know, my mom uh, sings in a choir in the local cathedral where I grew up and she's been a singer her entire life. I was brought up singing my whole life. And then, you know, somebody turns around and says, you're not going to sing anymore ever again. You know, that really takes the wind out of your sails. And I think it's been a long road. This is the second record now that we've made since I had my operation and stuff. Right. Um, and I kind of feel like now I'm not only back to a position where I feel confident, I actually feel like my singing voice is better than ever because I kind of, you know, I've learned to live with the, you know, I've learned to live with uh, the recovery that I had to go through. Mm-hmm. I've also gone into training. Um, I've been here in London for about six months. I've been doing opera training with an opera teacher. With an opera teacher, mm-hmm. she's like an old school, old fashioned, really strict Mr. Miyagi style lady. Um, who is teaching me how to be an opera singer, basically. Mm-hmm. Turns out a lot of the skills are the same, you know. You need the same skills to be a singer, you know, whether you're a speed metal guy or an opera singer. So, yeah, like, that's been really amazing for me. I feel like I've got my confidence back. And, you know, with this record as well, I think the se- the secret to... I would never say I'm a good singer, but I think I think the secret to successful singing is to sound like yourself. Right. You know, you don't, wanna, <clears throat> you don't need to copy anybody else. You know, you don't need to put on an American accent and pretend you're from California. Um, you don't, you know, you know what I mean. You don't have to do any of those things. 
Right. So to me, it's kind of like now I'm really confident to just be myself when I'm when I'm singing. And as I say, I think our bands really want our personality to be in our music, you know. And a lot of a lot of my favorite bands and favorite singers, you can hear that they really mean it because that is their personality. Bobby Blitz is a great example. Right. You know, he is but he is a badass. He is like a little uh, a little angry skinny guy from Jersey, you know, um, right. with you know with dubious Irish uh, ancestry and shit like that. So <laughs> when he sings, you know, you can really hear that, you know. He's the kind of guy who after the song will go, <laughs> <you know? laughs> that's right, that's right. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel like we want to be, we want to be in that kind of bracket, you know, with Joey Ramone and, and uh, Bobby and all those kind of guys. So, yeah, like, I think the singing to us as a band is really important. It is the thing that marks us out as, as different from other thrash bands. Right, right. Totally agree with that. In fact, you know, this reminded me of an example of great vocal interplay on a track like She Think. And yeah, that, yeah. That's where you know uh, how everything is is shaped up, and then how it concludes gives a very simple example of if somebody has to say how Philly sings, take this track, and you got an answer. Oh. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that's a really cool song. Um, so that song is about the Bride of Frankenstein, which is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, it's from 1933, I think it is. Um, and I love it. I love that movie. And um, you know, I've always wanted to write a song about the Bride of Frankenstein. And Joe and I were talking about, um, the song is called Midnight, I think it's called Midnight Tornado, and I think it's by Skid Row. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it just has this amazing chorus uh, that builds to this really nice melodic point. And me and Joe were kind of sitting around one night having a beer, and we were saying, why don't we try to write a song like Midnight Tornado? You know, why, why can't there be a speed metal version of this kind of song? <laughs> right. um, and I think when you listen to it, you can almost hear a little bit of that DNA in it, you know? Um and, you know, we love that movie because it's such an old fashioned, crazy, really camp horror movie. It's basically like a, a like a psychedelic comedy movie, except it's also really gay and stuff. It's like just a bizarre, crazy film. And I think that we've managed to convey some of that kind of psychedelic craziness in the song, too. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's it's one of it's one of my personal favorite songs on the record. Awesome. And in fact, you know, I was even thinking that now now the, the vocals and the guitar work, obviously by Domo and John, are consistent throughout. But, you know, if you look at it, one might feel that this formula be monotonous or repetitive, you know, but this album could be easily criticized heavily if, if you guys would have made a 60 minute saga of this sound. But, oh, yeah. And quickly, which is a great thing. Yeah. So, you know, there's a reason why most cakes only have eight slices, you know. Right. Um, you know, there's a reason why Coke only comes in a, you know, in a maximum two liter bottle. It's, you know, it's because you can only have so much of a thing like that. Right. We've always been really aware of that. We sent the record to, the, to our label, to AFM, when we finished it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they said back was, uh, you know, guys, because the German guys, oh, you know, guys, we really like the record, but it's kind of short. And we were just <laughs> like, yeah, of course it's short. It's, you know, insane, high speed thrash metal. Right. You, know, you want to hang out all day, listen to that kind of thing. You know, I, I kind of think of it like that. It's like, you know, a quick sprint around the park, not a marathon, you know. Right. Um, and I think that a lot of bands lose sight of of that. Um, so, like, the dream for us is is that people will put our record on when they're getting ready to go out. You know, they'll drink a few beers. Um, they'll put their jacket on. And by the time they're finished, 30 minutes are up. And it's time to leave the house, you know. Yeah. And I always think that's, like, the best success. Or, you know, when people are going out cruising with their friends and they want to drive to somewhere, 30 minutes, one of our records is over, you know? So I really like that. Um, you know, I think, I think brevity is really, <laughs> brevity is really the spirit of what we're doing. Um, I think we would outstay our welcome pretty fucking quickly otherwise. Ah, that's really cool. So, you know, if I would have to basically, let's say, introduce somebody to Gamma Bomb's music, you know, they will either think it's 80s thrash or it's a fresh attempt at bringing thrash back. Which of the two opinions do you guys hope to have? Well, you know, it's it's fine. It's you know, uh, obviously, I've been thinking about this for a long time, so I'm a little bit philosophical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, it's '80s thrash. Thrash metal is from the 1980s, right. just like a blues, just like a blues guitar player is playing 1920s music, you know, or uh, or a dance mu music person is playing 1990s music. You know, like uh, it it is a 1980s thing, but I, I like to think that we exist outside of that. Uh, we also exist outside of a revival. Right. You know, we were around before the thrash metal revival kicked off. We had a lot of fun with it, but you know we never needed that. Um, we we were we were here before that. We're still here, you know, uh, arguably after it's over. So yeah, you know what? It's it's thrash metal. It's speed metal. 
um, you know, and, and generally the most important thing about it is, is that it's like, it's bloody, bloody nosed, white knuckle, kind of hair raising, um, bullshit infused speed metal. <laughs> and that's how I would describe it. Um, so yeah, like if somebody said to me, man, your band sounds like they're from the 1980s, I would just laugh and say, that's rad. Um, we met a woman once when we were on tour, the, I'll tell you a true story. We met a woman on tour once and she was all like, Hey, I used to love Gamma Bomb, the original band. <laughs> and we were like, what are you talking about? And then she said that Gamma Bomb were a band in the 1980s Whoa. who existed. Yeah, she said they they existed and that, that they then retired and that we are now playing their music. <clears throat> um, oh. Yeah, like she assumed we were some kind of like, I don't know, fucking next generation. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, uh, so what was their record? And she was like, yeah, Survival of the Fastest. And I was like, no, that's our first record. That's, uh, that's our record. And she didn't believe us. So, you know... Um, Sometimes it turns out that people think even we didn't even write our records. So I guess <laughs> I guess we have to take the rough with the smooth on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool, Philly. Now, you know, I was like you said, you know, you guys uh, started doing uh, way before this this new wave of so-called thrash metal thing began. So, you know, yeah. what, are some of, what are some of the other bands that basically, let's say, are doing the same thing like Gamma Bomb does? Uh, some of the other bands, uh, yeah, you know, we've we've made a lot of really good friends uh, over the years. We had an awful lot of fun um, around 2008 when this all kicked off. Um, we signed a record deal and we made a lot of good friends. I guess uh, Evil are the other band that people tend to take seriously. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, um, Evil have made some some really uh, important records, and I think a lot of people respect them, and they're good friends of ours. Um, uh, Short Sharp Shock, SSS. Uh, or a band from Liverpool, and you know they're they're a bit like us. They never really wanted to be. They never really wanted to be associated with a, you know a thrash scene. Mm-hmm. They're more of a crossover band, um, kind of hardcore and crossover. Um, they're an amazing band, um, and they they're still kind of around too. Um, obviously, big fans of uh, Municipal Waste, um, Bonded by Blood, are old friends of ours over in the states. Right. Um, you know, I think Vector are really cool dudes. We've yeah, met them Vector. as well. But they yeah, that's really good. Kind of a frog thrash kind of thing, right? Yeah, you know, and that's that's the thing that I like about them. They're just like, oh, better stick to the formula. They went and did their own thing, and I right. really respect that. And you know, there's other cool bands like Doctor Living Dead from Sweden, um, Angela Zapatrida, uh, and there are really cool Irish bands as well, like Animator, Psychosis, Scimitar. So yeah, like there's there's a lot of bands. I don't listen to a lot of thrash these days. I listen to old school thrash. You know, I listen to Overkill and Tankard and Sodom. Um, or Agent Steel. I don't, tend to, I don't tend to listen to a lot of revival stuff. But no. you know what? Like, it is a scene that came and arguably has gone, but a lot of very cool people were associated with it. And if it wasn't for that scene, we wouldn't have made a lot of very good friends that we have too. Right, right. I totally understand that fully. And what's the plan of taking the album on road? I mean, that's where your your actual animal inside comes out. So any touring plans yep. for you know this album to be unleashed? Yeah, well, for us, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to, I like that, unleash, we're going to unleash the album. We're currently sharpening its claws and starving it so it becomes blood crazed and then we can release it from the cage. Right. Um, yeah, so um, in in real life, we are going to, uh, we're, we're, yeah, basically we're kind of at a stage now uh, where we want to pick and choose the things that we do. You know, we don't really go on tour for three months in a row anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we tend to... Um, go and, and pick and choose the right thing to do at the right time. So, you know, touring for us and, and gigging is really what the whole point of being in a band is. You know, being in a band is about the love of music and playing music live is one of the best things that you can do as a person. So we always want to get back out, out there on the road and get into that. And um, What we're doing this year is we're going to Europe before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to play some shows in the Netherlands. And then next year, um, pretty Europe heavy. We're going to be going to Spain for a mini tour. We love going to Spain. Um, we're going to be going to uh, the summer festivals and then we're going to do a tour of South America, which will be really cool. So previously we've been to Brazil a couple of years back with uh, Dark Funeral and we're hoping to get back now to, to Brazil, um, Colombia and a couple of other countries too. So we're really excited about that, you know, because anywhere that anywhere that we get to play to new people is really important for us. <clears throat> so I reckon, I reckon we're going to be pretty busy and in 2017 the hope is that we can, uh, that we can go to the U.S., um, cool. Now, of course, we would love to go to places we've never been before, like India and Japan and, you know, crazy places like Australia. Right. So that's always something that we're looking out for, too. So if anybody out there is listening and wants to bring us to Japan or India or Southeast Asia, you just give us a holler. Get in touch. <laughs> 
That's true because you know, uh, you know, like you said, I'm gonna catch you guys at uh, the Eindhoven Festival in December. Oh, cool! Be there, cool. Yeah, you you guys are gonna be playing there. So that that in fact reminded me of how things are shaping up here in India. Uh, you know, possibly with a lot of bands coming in. And you, I mean, you won't believe it. A band like Megadeth are touring India more than any other band. I don't know for what reasons, to be honest. Well, you know, India has like how many people live in India? Fucking a billion or something. How many people live there? It's an insane amount of people. Insane. I mean, I mean, <laughs> like it's something which we are almost next to China, so you can. Yeah, so at almost a billion people. Yeah. That's amazing. That means there's just every type of thing is popular. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like I'm from Ireland, where uh, some things are so unpopular, nobody is into them. You got a billion people all living on one big huge landmass. You could, you could fucking throw any band in there, and there's going to be about a million people who love it. <laughs> you that, know, uh, that's something that, which is going to suck. I tell you, to be honest, because we're here in India, folks don't listen to metal. You know, it's it's yeah. growing, it's growing from last around eight years. From 2008 oh, okay. onwards, it's become. I mean, almost every metal band has come here, and the maximum I can say, obviously, you know, for a band like Metallica yeah. who played here with 40,000 metalheads yeah. raising their horns. Yeah! Wow! Amazing. Well, that would be a dream for us, man, you know, to go somewhere like India. And, you know, the, the the greatest thing about being a musician is you get to travel all over the world. And instead, and instead of being like a bullshit tourist where you've got to go and sit in a hotel, you know, you know, you and your girlfriend sitting looking at each other being really bored. Right. <laughs> when you're when you're a musician, you can actually go um, you can actually go to places and meet new friends and, uh, you know, meet really cool people who who tell you what it's like to be a real person who lives there. You know, you can actually go to the bar with those guys and, you know, you can dri drive around in their cars and like do weird shit, like meet people's mums and dads and have dinner with them. You know, you can do really weird stuff. So that's why we love traveling and going to somewhere like India where we could actually meet people, make friends and, and learn what it's like to live there. That would just be so insanely cool for us, you know. That'll be really, really So before we conclude, how about uh, you define the sound of untouchable glory in just one sentence? Okay, let me think about this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I'm thinking. Okay. It's like someone gave Thin Lizzy steroids, set them loose in a boxing club and told them to kick everybody in the balls. <laughs> that's insane. Wow, that's really <laughs> cool. I, I kind of expected an out-of-box answer, but you just surpassed it. Fantastic. <laughs> that's what I'm here for, man. <laughs> oh, fantastic, Billy. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I had a great time. You know, I mean, we're having a chat for the first time. I really had a great time. I love the album. I look forward to meet you guys at Eindhoven, you know, in December. Thanks so much, man. Looking forward to it as well. Thanks for chatting. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Cheers, man. Bye-bye.